Good morning, YouTube. Check out this Jenga block that I made, and I'm about to knock down. It is Sunday, 10 a.m. in Texas, and we are doing another Salty Texas Woodworking Project, trying to get rid of all this scrap. And that's the motivation for today's particular project that we are doing. I've already used the word particular to do this commentary, and I have not watched this video, so hopefully we're going to get this commentary done in one take. So, had a bunch of scrap wood, obviously I've been using this for the past several projects, and we're doing a little something different today. We're going to use, I've never used like pearl before in resin, and I thought, you know what, I've got glitter, I've got this pearl, let's see what kind of cool contrasting colors we can get. And I was really glad I did this, and I know I say this in a lot of my projects, but this might actually be the best bowl I have ever made so you get this cool green slimer effect as you can see right here a lot of glitter a lot of uh, a lot of white pearl essence in the background and put it in the five quart bucket put it in the pressure pot for four and a half hours and here we are all cast it up you can see that cool glitter it looks like a little bit of gold in there with this green really fine glitter that i picked up at hobby lobby by the way if you don't have a Hobby Lobby, your town needs to get one because they literally have all kinds of cool crap. So here we are, got everything loaded up, and just like I've done in several other projects, the five quart bucket for some reason loves to stick to the epoxy. I try to get as much of that material off as humanly possible. Wasn't able to get everything, but we got a majority of it on this one. So here we are putting the face plate on, trying to get everything nice and centered. Ryobi drill. Putting in the screws only halfway, or not even, it's a little bit more than halfway, obviously, but it's, uh, you gotta screw it down so the wood doesn't like bend or break or anything like that. And we're gonna throw it on our Nova, Nova Comet 2 lathe. And we're gonna get this spun down. This one took me about two days to finish between uh, work and everything. So, uh, you can see a little bit of dancing already on the lathe. I think that's just something that's come to be like part of our norm here. Why I can't. Well, I know why. It's because this is a giant block of resin, and this is a midi lathe, and this is probably not designed to handle something this large. So here I am trying to use the uh, you know, bowl gouge, trying to get the edges all nice and even, while trying to maintain some semblance of balance on the lathe itself. And I'm just fighting with the material. And somebody asked me like a while back, you know, how I'm able to actually wood turn and uh, have a dancing lathe. It's not easy, but I was kind of worried there. You could see a lot of the material was already gouging out. I was getting like crystal like type, you know, glass protrusions off of the blank at this point. And I was really concerned that maybe I didn't mix the epoxy well or this was going to be like a complete shit show as far as uh, turning it down because I had so many gaps in it. But, you know, we stuck with it. We were trying to get everything nice and even. Once you got everything nice and even on the blank itself, it, it turned out pretty nice. So a lot of the dancing stops once you get a lot of the material work down. You just have to be really careful with these larger blanks because they tend to make the wood lathe dance. And here we are working the bottom of it, trying to get everything nice and even using the round carbide tool. And you can see me there just putting the rest or putting the tool on top of the blank itself while it turns and just trying to see you know, how even we are. And it's still moving a little bit, but not nearly as bad as it was in the beginning because now I have it kind of in the middle of the workbench as opposed to push all the way up against the you know back of the bench. And you can see the there's a lip there that prevents it from falling off the sides. And by this time, it's pretty late at night and I'm just trying to get everything done nice and even before we start uh, the bowl gouging portion of it. And I learned from my previous Ruby Red project, if you went back and saw that one, uh, I'm going to leave the lip of the bowl for when I reverse it in the chuck so that I don't end up having a giant shard of epoxy hit me in the face. So once we got everything pretty much down nice and even, now we're just going to gouge out the bottom and make a mortise, came back trying to gouge out the bottom a little bit further with the round carbide tool and then I just come back and hit it with a square carbide tool. This is probably one of my favorite parts because this is the part where I know it's going to go fairly smooth and I'm a bit of an expert now at making mortises as opposed to when I first started and I had no idea what I was doing. So then we're just taking the round carbide tool making the bottom very nice and even and I know some woodworkers when they kind of do this 
they'll do the sanding portion uh, at this point before they flip it on the chuck. But I like to go ahead and just turn it and reverse it uh, before I do my sanding. I like to have the whole bowl completed before I do sanding. I think it just works easier that way, even though you don't really polish the bottom all that much. But we might do that, you know, a, that, we might do that technique a little bit later in another project. So here we are, got everything, you know, you know, nice even, and now we're just taking the chisel and trying to get that waste block off. And as you, if you watch the channel for any length of time, I used to just, you know, take a gouge and, you know, try to get everything off without, what, what am I trying to say? I used to just, you know, would just carve my way through that waste block, but it's just easier just to take it off like that and use it for a, a later project. So here we are, now we're working the lip of the bowl. Everything is nice and even. And to prevent another incident where a giant shard of epoxy hits me in the face, uh, we're just taking it real easy on the lip of the bowl, making sure everything is nice and even. And now we're just taking off that superficial layer of the bowl blank itself before we start the gouging part. So I found also that if I take this superficial layer off, it makes a, my job a lot easier for when I start the gouging process. So now all we're doing up to this point is getting everything nice and even, making sure that everything is nice and round before we start the actual gouging portion of it, which is typically the most difficult portion of the build. And I needed to say, every time I reset my bowl gouge, the banjo wants to move a little bit. So there I am moving it back and forth, trying to get everything nice and evened out. And just like all the other projects that I usually do, the middle is probably the easiest portion to fill out, only because there is uh, it's mostly just waste block that's in the middle of it, and then the sides are where the epoxy fills up a little bit more. So, got the uh, majority of the middle gouged out the way we wanted. And now we're just coming back, hitting it with some of those more medium sized gouges, getting the edges all rounded out, trying to determine what the depth of the bowl is actually going to be. And having a little bit of problem, but I mean, it's it's more of just, you know, trying to figure out what the epoxy wants to do. And I think this is the project where it flies off the roof. I know I have one of these projects. Yeah, this is it. So watch this. this is Classic salty Texas, and I'm going really smooth. I'm not having a lot of problems. I'm taking my time, being real easy with the chisel. Uh, but for some reason, uh, boom, it popped right off the lathe. So that happens a lot. I swear, the first one of the first T-shirts. If this channel ever gets big enough, I'm gonna have some kind of T-shirt where something is referenced about flying off the lathe. So the problem with when your bowl blank flies off the lathe like that is it doesn't set evenly the same because you put it in a different spot. Even though you push it up against the back of the chuck, it doesn't always set in the same way. So if you look at the blank itself right now, you can tell that the bowl is uneven. If you look at the lip and like the real you know, edges of the bowl blank as it spins on the lathe, you can tell it's uneven. And I can absolutely tell in the chisels, but I'm, I'm trying to get as much material worked out before I start working the finer edges. And I almost didn't go back because I was like, because my biggest fear once you start gouging out to a certain point is if you go back and try to even things out on the outer portion of the bowl like this, you do run the chance of getting chip out to where the entire lip of the bowl comes flying off the lathe. And in some of my very early woodworking projects, I used to get that a lot where I would come back and try to make everything even and it would catch and then the entire lip of the bowl would come off and it would just completely ruin the project. So I decided to go back, really take my time using the round carbide tool to get everything nice and even the best I the best I could. And that's what I'm doing here is just getting everything nice and even before we continue gouging out even more. So once I was happy with the way it had gouged out, then I just went back and finished the sides of the bowl. And from here on in, I didn't have any major issues with the project. And by this time, I'm very happy with how the bowl has turned out. The best part about it was when it flew off the mortise, uh, that it didn't crack the bottom of the mortise because I've had some projects where when it flies off the lathe like that, the bottom of the mortise cracks and you basically have to start from scratch all over again. So we got lucky in this project. Like I said, this is probably the best bowl I've ever made. It turned out absolutely gorgeous, but there were 
uh, there were a couple of complications with it and it took two days but overall really happy the way this bowl turned out and as you'll see at the end you might not be able to see you know how good this looks but it came out absolutely beautiful with the glitter and that pearl that we put in there so going from 340 all the way up with the micro mesh like we typically will do getting everything nice and sanded this is the part that i absolutely hate i wish i could skip sanding but this is where you make your money in woodworking especially doing bowls and epoxy work this is where everything turns out really well if you really take your time and now we're just hitting it with that wood wax you can see all the nice finer scrap pieces the wood grains and a lot of that pine and we're just hitting it with regular wood wax like we usually do and it turned out absolutely gorgeous i wish i would have been able to show you this in the sunlight but by the time i had finished it was already late at night so i didn't have the opportunity to you know show it in the sun but it turned out really well and here it is the completed project once we got everything nice and polished and we're about to stop the lathe and boom there it is almost okay i don't know when i'm stopping the lathe okay now we finally stopped the lathe so there it is you get like this cool marbling effect as well and it looks absolutely stunning like couldn't be happier you see a little bit of that glitter that pine board the way it really just catches in the light and that bottom piece looks really really good so hope you guys enjoyed the project i had a really good time doing this even though it flew off the lathe we still got something miraculously awesome out of it so hope you guys are having a good summer you're probably watching this in july don't forget to subscribe we're trying to get to a thousand before the end of the year and i'll see you guys in the next project peace all right so the project is done and we did have one episode where it did fly off the lathe but granted we haven't had that happen in a very long time. So uh, good for us, good for the channel. Uh, today is March 2nd, 2021. You guys are probably watching this in June or July. Beautiful piece. So you saw, and I'm sure I went over in the commentary, this was just pearl white uh, pigment with some glitter, and it looks absolutely amazing. I don't know if you can see that in there, but there's actual glitter pieces really good project but other than flying out the lathe one time no other big problem so hope you guys like the project don't forget to subscribe we're trying to get to a thousand this year and i'll see you guys in the next project all right bye